Good evening, Senator. Good evening. I'm and sorry I feel underdressed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I want to thank you for all your help while you've been in the, in the Senate, and uh, I appreciate everything you do. But I haven't heard recently as to the status of uh, what be, might be going on with uh, immigration and, uh, <clears throat> and what's going on to the extent that you would know uh, on deportation. And whether, in fact, and whether, in fact, we can get those people that did such a good job on the Veterans Hospital to help the president out to build a wall. <laughs> so that those are the folks you would want. <laughs> <laughs> it would never get done, Senator. <laughs> I just appreciate it. It's such an important issue, and um, uh, um, and it's a place where I think real violence is being done to our traditions right now. Um, along with these traditions, you know, are the rule of law and separation of powers and freedom of the press and um, our history as, as a nation of immigrants. And some of you may know, probably some of you do, do, that I was part of the Gang of Eight that wrote the immigration bill in the Senate. Four Democrats and four Republicans who spent eight months together uh, writing a bill that I think the American people would be reasonably proud of. And the process for once in Washington, people sitting there actually solving problems. And that bill did have meaningful border security. And in fact, it's the only bill in the, that's passed either House of the Senate that had any border security and some internal security. It all set a pathway to citizenship for the 11 million people that are here in the document. It also had a, a, an expedited pathway for people that were here working on our farms and our ranches. That was a provision that I wrote with Marco Rubio and, and Diane Feinstein and Warren Hatch. It was a really good bill. And it got 68 votes in the Senate. And if Paul Ryan had had the guts to do what the American people want, the, want them to do, it would have passed in the House of Representatives, and we wouldn't have had to go through the agony of what the Trump administration is doing on immigration and to immigrants in this country. I was in Aurora during the campaign at, a, at the Asian Pacific and Asian Pacific Islander Center, which is about a block off Colfax, not far from here. There are people from Bhutan and Japan and Nepal and places like that. And at the end of it, a woman got up who said, I'm not, she said, I'm, I'm, my parents were from India. They were doctors. They came to the United States. And I'm an American. I was born here. Just like the judge that Trump said couldn't decide his case because his parents were born in Mexico. And she said, Michael, I just want you to remember two things from this conversation. One, when you hear all this anti-Muslim talk, you guys think it's just about the Middle East, but our whole region of the world is filled with hundreds of millions of people that are hearing this, and they have no idea what the implication is for them. And she might have said she didn't for the war on terror, because a lot of these countries have been held with it. And then the second thing she said was, I'm not Muslim, I'm Hindu. But I don't detect that these people are distinguishing between one brown person and another brown person. <laughs> and when you consider what's happened to families who have been deported uh, since Donald Trump has been president, it is astonishing what's happened. I, I had a meeting with uh, Kelly, who's the Secretary of Homeland Security. He's a good guy. He's a quality person. But he said in the meeting, he said, well, we're just, we're just getting, we're focused on the real criminals. That's what we're going to do. And then in the course of the conversation, he, it became apparent that he was including in that category people who had come to this country on a lawful visa, but had overstayed their visa. And I pointed out to him, that's 40% of the 11 million people that are here that are undocumented. And that's a bunch of the people that in our own community we've had. I started today on my way to Fort Collins meeting in uh, north of Denver. Where were we? Westminster or some? What? North Glen? With, um, with a guy uh, who, was the, who was arrested. Arturo is his name, Hernandez. He was arrested uh, 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 two weeks
weeks ago, he's been in our country, working in our country for 20 years. He's got a tile business. He's got one daughter who's an American citizen. She's born here. He's got another daughter who's a DACA student. He's got a wife who's undocumented and a father-in-law who's an American citizen. He lives in a house, a trailer that, you know, he has completely refurbished himself because he has the skills to do it. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And he was arrested for no reason uh, at his place of business and put in the Aurora detention facility and they said they were going to send him back to Mexico a week before his daughter was supposed to graduate from North Atlanta High School. And, and Perlmutter wrote a private bill and I wrote a private bill and ICE, you know, has now decided not to do that. But it shouldn't come to that. You know, we should have a set of priorities. Mayor Hancock, I don't think you would mind my saying this, called me earlier this week to say, you know, and I used to work for the city and county of Denver for a guy named John Hickenlooper. I have no idea what happened to him. <laughs> but, but I think he lives in Park Hill somewhere. <laughs> but, but Michael called me, Michael Hancock called me, and he said, I've, you know, got a call from the city attorney's office, and we have people that will not show up to testify in domestic abuse cases yeah. because ICE is arresting people on, in the courthouse. They shouldn't be arresting people in the courthouse or in a church or in a school. And I tell you, this young lady today who graduated from North Glen, I walked into the house and the first thing I saw was her diploma sitting there on, on, this, on the table. Um, I asked her, I said, how many other, are there a lot of other kids that are uh, in the same situation you're in at your school? And she said, I don't know. And there's a reason some people don't know, because you don't want to talk about it. She said, I don't know, but, I, but, but what happened to me on graduation day was a woman, uh, another girl came up to me and said how glad she was that my dad was out of prison and could come see my graduation. And then she said, but she told me that both of her parents had been deported the month before. Well, <coughs> Senator, I, that, I, I hope I get <laughs> out of this great institution without having to be report, deported. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah. I mean, I've been here since I was born. My parents came yeah. here from Mexico, and uh, uh, this is the greatest country on the planet. But it, it's, it's, uh, it, it, we've got to care a little more for one another than we do. Well, and that, that I think is the most important point. So sometimes people say, what can you do? What politician can you do? What can you during the whole campaign, when I traveled around, I said one thing that turned out to be untrue and another thing that I still believe is true. The thing I said that turned out to be untrue was that nobody this anti-immigrant could be elected president of the United States. That was wrong. That was wrong. But what I said that was true is that in a moment like this, it is up to all of us, not just people in the Senate, it's up to all of us to put our hands on someone else's shoulder and say, we're glad you're here. We hope you'll come back to our church on Sunday. We appreciate the work that you're doing in our fields or in our factories or cleaning that hotel. We're glad that you're a student at DU or at CSU. Do you know that the, the I met with the engineering graduate students at DU uh, a month ago or so, and 20% uh, of the applicants to that school are Iranian. And I met with the Iranian students, and we have now barred them from the United States of America because of the refugee ban. I met with the, the Muslim leadership at Fort Collins. 90% uh, of the people in northern Colorado who are Muslim are students here. And what they're going to do as a result of this, if we don't figure it out, is they're going to go to Canada, and they're going to go to New Zealand, and we're not going to have the benefit of their talent. I've told folks around Colorado that there isn't anybody I've met. I've traveled every inch of our state over and over again. It's a joy because it's the most beautiful state in the country and it's like being on vacation all the time. <laughs> and I have yet to meet a person in this state that has a thicker accent than my grandparents had, not just when they came to America, but when they died in America as American citizens. And they were Polish Jews like my mom who survived the Holocaust miraculously and, and, and after the war was over made it to Sweden, made it to Mexico City and made it to New York City. My mom was the only person in her 
family who could speak any English. She enrolled herself in the public schools in New York City. That's America. And we need to embrace it, and we have got to reject the rhetoric that's coming out of this administration. Thank you, and you need to let people know that you care about it.